Hey everyone, thanks for watching. This is video seven in our Free Indeed series, and we're calling this Craving Sin. We're going to be talking about spiritual balance, as I promised in the introduction to this series. Uh, just a quick recap, in the last video we look, took a brief look at um, dissecting our checklist that God's given to us. Uh, and I told you, you know, don't become overwhelmed. Don't become, uh, you know, disappointed or discouraged, but to just have an open heart and, and hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. Let Him come in and help you, even if this is the 10th time you've tried or the 100th time you've tried or the 2000th time you've tried, but that you're getting back up. The righteous man always gets back up. Um, but maybe you saw my last video and maybe you're saying, you know what, I can't break free from that. I've tried many times, I've asked for help, um, but when temptation comes around, I fail. Uh, or maybe you're saying, sometimes I even go out to pursue it myself. I don't even need temptation to come to me. I go out and seek it myself and, and crave after it. And so that's what we're talking about, craving sin. Um, so this video is definitely for you. And what I'd like to say here is just that my response to your, your condition is that you're spiritually imbalanced. Um, just like we have physical immune systems, we also, I like to think that we have spiritual immune systems. And just like we have physical cravings, we have spiritual cravings, right? And where do cravings come from? Physical cravings come from often from a, a deficit, right? Something that's lacking within us physically, like a vitamin or a mineral or something that we're not getting in our diets. And so our, our body's sending this signal saying, I'm missing something. And wouldn't it be nice if it would just say, hey, we're a little low on iron today. Or we're a little low on thiamine, but it doesn't work that way. And so it just sends this signal saying, hey, something's missing. I don't feel good. And, and so then we start craving something and, and like a cookie, right? And we're like, well, we know that the cookie, it, it didn't really solve the deficit, but boy, did it feel good. And so it's the same way spiritually. Our spiritual immune systems, when we're craving sin, it's because spiritually we're lacking. We have a deficit going on and we're saying, you know, our, our spirit saying, hey, um, last time I felt lonely, uh, last time I was frustrated, last time I was depressed, um, instead of going to the Father, um, you know what, I went to drugs, or I went to drinking, or I went to sleeping around, or I went to who knows what, right? And yeah, it didn't solve the problem, it didn't solve the deficit, but boy, did it make me feel good. And then we get entrapped and entangled in addiction and so on and so forth. And so it's the same way, physically, spiritually. It's a good way of looking at it. Um, I actually experienced something really neat, and God told me to put this in my video about two months ago. Um, the Lord instructed me to go on a, a really strict diet, a cleanse, a detox, and then to continue it as a way of life because he is the great physician and he knows my body better than I do. And so he asked me to go on this strict diet. I was a little concerned at first because between the hours of dinner time and bedtime, I usually am craving sugar. I want like cookies or peanut butter M&Ms or, or ice cream or something, right? And, and I knew that God wasn't, that wasn't part of God's plan on this diet for me. And so I was kind of concerned that maybe that was going to be the hardest part of my diet. But as I not only took out the things that he told me to take out, but added the things that he told me to add, I started to realize I didn't have cravings in the evening for sugar. And the reason was because I was getting plenty of fruits in my diet. I was getting the right sugars in my diet. And so I was no longer craving. I didn't have a craving for sugar, this false kind of sugar that doesn't solve the deficit, but just makes me, makes me feel good. So it's the same way spiritually, right? When we're when we're lacking something, we're, we're, you know, like I said, we're 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 craving something. Our body is saying, "Hey, something's missing." But often, instead of going to the Father during those times of lack and letting Him fill those gaps in our life, we're filling them with other things. Our scripture is Galatians 5, 16, which says, "Walk in the Spirit, and you will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh." So in other words, walk in the Spirit and you will not crave sin or pursue it. Um, in fact, you will begin to crave and pursue righteousness and goodness and peace and all those good things, right? The fruits of the Spirit and so on and so forth. And, and Jesus even says, 
blessed are those who crave those things, right? He said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness because I will fill them. And so we will know that our spirits are spiritually balanced and they're getting exactly what they need when we start craving and, and pursuing and, and hungering, thirsting after righteousness. But we don't always walk in the spirit. Um, we sometimes walk in the spirit, right? Our lives are the opposite. We often um, have more of the world and more of entertainment and more of uh, all these other things and just a tiny bit of Jesus. But if we flip that around and we start feeding our spirit more, like we're, we're getting a prayer and devotion in the morning, we're listening to worship music or singing worship music all day long. Every moment that we have that's free, we're, we're praying to God. We're asking him to help us. You know, um, we're, we're anytime we're sitting down alone, we're bored. Instead of putting on a movie, we're putting on a message, right? We're, we're abiding, we're, we're walking in the spirit at that point. Okay. And not the opposite where we're reaching to worldly things. But that's not usually how it is. Like I said, we don't easily just walk in the spirit. We end up um, kind of like the the person in, in James, where uh, James talks about how we were hearers but not doers, right? We we go to church and we're like looking in the mirror, and, and then um, God convicts us, and then we walk away and we instantly forgot what we were convicted about. But God's saying, no, I want you to walk. I want you to look into the perfect law of liberty so that you will know who you are, so you can walk in righteousness and make the changes that need made. Um, I often tell my kids, they, you know, they grumble and complain during the test saying this wasn't on the test or this wasn't in the material and they're, I don't even know what the answer to this is. Of course it's a test and I can't help them, but I always tell them they're not going to give you a, a test on something they didn't give you material for. And first Corinthians 10, 13 talks about, and I'm sure you've heard it, how it says, no man is tempted beyond what he can handle, right? And God doesn't tempt us. The Bible says God doesn't tempt us, but he does test us. And so God doesn't test us on something he didn't give us the material for, something that he can't really expect from us, you know, and we say, well, obviously he did because I, I failed. I, I didn't pass the test. Well, and the reason is because you're not walking in the spirit. You've got to walk in the spirit. And sometimes that takes time time, right? It's like a, a, a plateau when you are actually dieting to lose weight. You've been at it, you're, you're strict on your diet, you've even been working out and you don't go up or down on the scale, right? But then all of a sudden one day you get on the scale and you've lost five pounds, right? It's the same way spiritually. We got to pursue it. We got to keep at it. And pretty soon we're going to break through and overcome because that's what we're here for. We are here to overcome. Um, germs hang out with babies and people have weak immune systems and so do spirits. And so God's desire is for us to um, have a strong spiritual immune system so we have less spirits hanging around us all the time, convincing us and taking advantage of us and robbing from us. We are here to grow, to overcome um, and, and to grow strong spiritually and grow spiritual immunities and put to death the deeds of the flesh so that we can live. Jesus said, he who overcomes, I will give to eat for the tree of life. See, you now I believe that, uh, that in the garden, God did intend to eventually let us eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, but it wasn't time yet. And so, um, man was still in his infancy and he didn't have the spiritual immunities yet to handle eating from that tree. And that's why God said, you shall surely die. Okay. And God, and Satan knew that. And so of course he came to still kill and destroy like he always does and rob that from us. But God said, okay, now it's done. They've eaten from that tree. Now they're going to overcome. They're going to grow up spiritually. They're going to mature. And when they do, when they overcome, then I will give them to eat of the tree of life. And so just like Jesus said, I will give them who overcome this right. And so we're here to grow and to mature, but we can't do that with the cares of the world and the riches and the pleasures of this world choking us, making us unfruitful. And the enemy's quick to dangle those things in front of us, right? And so we got to step away from those things and do what Jude one twenty says would to build ourselves up in our most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keeping ourselves in the love of God and looking to the tender mercies of our Lord Jesus Christ and to eternal life. And those are our spiritual vitamins to help our immune system. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the rest of the series.